it's time for Dirty Story Night. Today we have a brand new competitor who won our free theme month. Here is Tay Buggers Barbie. The story is called Needs an Opening. Sometimes a successful woman, one who has achieved milestones in her many career paths, a car and a house, that is the envy of all her friends and universally indicative of the life girls can only dream of, just wants to get fucked. <laughs> Oftentimes there's a man who has been in her life, an on-again, off-again relationship spanning decades that for some reason just never took home the trophy. She hadn't seen him for a while, but all it took was one call. She knew he had heard the desire in her, in her voice. He would be there any minute. She checks her reflection for the seventh time and straightens her skin-tight dress around her supple proportions, thinking one continuous thought. Yes. The doorbell rings on cue, and she saunters over, letting lust linger in the air of the townhouse foyer. Hey. He looks as handsome as ever, even if he is sporting a man bun now. She can ignore it. Hey, yourself. He cannot believe this night is finally here. Come on in, she turns invitingly and glides into the interior of the house. I have wine. He follows, trying not to look like a starving stray, staring at the juiciest steak that he has ever seen. She holds his glass tantalizingly, just inches in front of the valley between her perfectly sculpted breasts. He claims it, intentionally letting the back of his fingers caress the soft upper curve. A wanting murmur escapes her. Do we really need wine? He intones boldly. She allows the masculine certainty to penetrate the air between them and like the gift of a breeze on a hot August night, places one hand in his and leads him upstairs. They fall into bed effortlessly, body on top of body. He thrusts his hard manhood upon her hard womanhood with the force and rhythm of a bear trying to scratch its ass on a tree in the woods. <laughs> his arms and legs at awkward angles to his torso as if swimming while suspended in outer space. Ow! She exclaims. Oh my God, Barbie, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. He genuinely atones. I know, Ken, but that just wasn't. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, he confesses. That's just what I remember, when it wasn't us, when it was them in control. They just kind of mashed our lower bits together like that song where they squished up the bumblebee. <laughs> Sorry, I got a page down here. <laughs> I know. I remember. I've tried to forget, but I remember. I thought it would be different if we shh, it will. It's okay. Everything is okay. He lays beside her and strokes her hair as best he can with his flipper-like conjoined fingers. <laughs> I think you're supposed to put something inside of me down there. What? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> what do you have, she genuinely asks. <laughs> well, it's kind of mounded. Here, feel. She moves a hand to cup his manhood. Oh, yeah, kind of, kind of round at the bottom. <coughs> what do you have? Here, feel. She takes his hand and places it gently between her legs, spreading them for his access. It, it just kind of disappears into a V, he says, discovering. I don't, I don't feel any sort of opening. She reaches down in both of their hands, explore in curiosity, roving, stroking, tentatively poking. Maybe I wasn't made right. The worrisome confession escapes her thoughts before she can stop it. No. His insistence is more forceful than a thousand thoroughbreds leading a god's chariot. You were made perfect. <laughs> Ken? Yes, Barbie? Can you make one? With what? She looks around the bedroom like a sniper for his target. <laughs> There's a flat black thumbtack holding up a rainbow unicorn picture on the wall. He glances at the thumbtack, then back at her. Oh, God. Are you sure? And their eyes meet in the surest solidarity of soldiers. Okay. He accepts his mission. She hikes the rest of her carefully coordinated ensemble up over her rounded rear and lays flat, completely exposed from her enviably narrow waist down. He is back on top of her, on his knees, peering down at her ski-sloped sex. I don't want to hurt you. You won't. He nods. Here it comes. A little prick. She sucks in her breath 
and winces as he pierces her. She feels the opening from the inside and the smooth slide of the tack in and out, feels part of her nearly pulled out with it as he extracts. Her nether region is airy with a life force she has only heard on the words of mommy wine speech. Oh, Ken, do it again. He obliges her for a few more thrusts, feeling a longing growing in his lack of loins. She senses unfulfilled desire in him and the idea strikes her as if she were a box a child rips open on Christmas morning and with the same intensity. I want to feel your weight on me, she says breathlessly. And without hesitation continues, there's a rubber band holding that broken desk together. If you take that and wrap it around the tack in both of your legs, he didn't need her to finish the thought out loud and in no time had the tack strapped on and ready. <laughs> They're now fluid bodies undulated together as only plastic parts and a strap-on thumbtack could. <laughs> Once spent, they lay together in the sticky glow of affirmation and maturity. Oh, oh, Ken, she sighs with the weight of Cupid's wings on her words. Who knew? And he finishes her thought. We just needed an opening. What did you start writing that one? What time did you send me that? I don't know, like noon? Two? It's All Been Done presents... Who's got the time?